Welcome to CPS 360. I'm Emma Higgins. And I'm Molly Fox. Abby visited Battle High School for an excellent time. Here's the story. On Friday, April 19th, the Battle National Honor Society put on what they hope will be their first annual Easter egg extravaganza in the Battle High School Commons. This Easter themed party was for elementary students and their families to enjoy the night. The two hour event started at 6 p.m. and went until 8 p.m., including games, prizes, face painting, and a raffle. NHS is um, short for National Honor Society, and it's where um, you get to apply your sophomore year of high school, but um, it really targets uh, kids who do well in school and really enjoy doing community service. So NHS put on this event this year to kind of get, uh, get ourselves out in the community because not a lot of people know about NHS, especially at battle. Just put something on for the community and also to raise money for our chapter. NHS had activities including freeze dance, Simon Says, face painting, coloring, a photo booth, and a cakewalk plan where kids could win treats like candy, cupcakes, mini cakes, as well as get Easter themes design painted on their face. And while the kids loved these activities, the high schoolers and the adults had a different favorite part of the night. Um, I liked that I get to paint my face. My favorite part of tonight was probably dancing with all the kids during freeze dance. Some of them have really cool dance moves and it was just fun to see them all laughing and jumping around. Oh, my favorite part of this event is just seeing the kids having a lot of fun. Kind of um, just, you know, Friday night, Friday night fun, good family fun. The NHS officers have been planning this since Christmas break, and after months of planning and hard work, they were very pleased with the turnout and hope that they can make this a bigger thing in the future for both themselves and the kids. Thanks, Abby. That story is to die for. Next, Tristan brings us a story about the Rockbridge girls' soccer team. The girls' soccer team season is coming to an end, with many of these girls being seniors, making this their last year of playing. These girls have a remarkable story to tell about their experience from soccer and their plans for the future. Families and friends can be an important motivator for people to go out and try new experiences to discover new passions. I don't know, I just kind of started playing at a really young age. Like my parents obviously just kind of put me into doing like rec soccer whenever I was younger. This is kind of what everyone does whenever they're little, I feel like. But um, I don't know, I feel like my parents kind of just pushed me to do it because I was like the one sport I was doing to keep me active and stuff. But I actually like really enjoyed it and so they didn't have to like pressure me to. I actually wanted to do it. So, But I think it's my parents kind of. So my sister played when she was younger, and so and my uncle played when he was in high school. So my mom really influenced me because it was a big part of her life growing up, and my sister's life. So I kind of wanted it to be a part of mine too. Um, I would probably say when I was younger, I did gymnastics, and a lot of the girls played soccer. So and my older brother had played soccer at the time. So my mom just put me in it. And I felt like, because I did gymnastics, I was super fast and flexible, and it just made me naturally good at soccer. The bonds of friendship that these girls create is something special, and is something that increases their love for soccer. Um, just like the relationships that I build, I've met like a lot of really cool people and like friends that I've kept for a really long time. Um, just playing on so many different teams, both with like club and high school, I've just made so many different friends. Um, just the team environment, like. Everyone is there to play, and so, like, even if you mess up, people encourage you to get back up and get the next ball or whatever because they know how it is, and they just care about you. Um, for Rockbridge soccer, I enjoy the people the most. I feel like that's why I've come back to play every year, but I feel like I just meet so many people, and they're my closest friends. The next level of soccer is at the college level. Some will continue to advance to that level, while some will always just continue to love the sport. Um, I'm very excited because I get to go on and play soccer in college, so I'm very excited to like do that. It's going to be a super different experience from club in high school. I'm just really excited for the new challenges and re relationships that I'm going to get from it. Um, I'm not really sure if I'm going to play in college. I'm probably going to play like rec, but I don't know. Soccer is just a really easy way to make friends for me because you just get on a very personal level when you're playing with people and so I'm excited to make new friends in college no matter what my path is. Um, well I'm a senior so this is my last year of soccer but maybe I'll play intramural at Mizzou. Soccer is a sport that requires a high amount of skill and improving sometimes involves getting frustrated 
but learning from yourself and your teammates is key to improving. Or just like how to keep control, I guess, in situations, like frustrating situations and stuff. Like soccer is just a big thing where like you can get frustrated easily just by how either you're playing or just like the other teams that you're playing. And so I feel like that that has taught me like how to like control like a situation. One big thing about me is that I get caught up in um, the people I've been playing with now have been really good about like getting me out of my rut. And so it's just nice to know like a little positivity positivity goes a long way for like just your terms of playing because that can change like a whole game if you're more positive on yourself um I've learned that I can't always get angry at my teammates and you have to have patience and just be as positive as you can and work on yourself and don't let little things um, stick with you and just let it go and move on in just a few short couple weeks, these girls' soccer experience at the high school level will come to an end, but they are already preparing for the journey ahead. This is Tristan Campbell with CPS360 signing off. Nice story, Tristan. Last week, students got creative at the Rockbridge Art Show. Sarah and Hallie have the story. On Sunday, April 14th, Rockbridge held their annual art show for its students. You greeted with cookies and a beautiful jungle-themed archway. There was a wide range of artwork made by freshmen, sophomores, juniors, and seniors. Moy, a senior, shares her experience. It's kind of surreal because I never actually see all my pieces together. Um, I have, like I mentioned earlier, I have two different sides of art where I do journalism art and I also do um, kind of traditional art here. And so I never actually get to see them all laid out together. and. Even at home, I have like my art section off into like sketches, um, completed pieces, and my digital pieces on the computer. And so having them all splayed out like this, it's like um, my whole portfolio in one piece. It's exciting, uh, nerve-wracking. It really depends on how you feel about your art. Many students who came to the art show and were able to take a look at the work of their fellow talented classmates. Clyde Sylvie shares his truth about their work. I saw my friend Caroline Bauer's artwork and it was really good and I've seen other people that I've uh, heard of artwork and it's like way more intense and like a more subliminal kind of feeling than I thought it would be. It's also like a lot more special because like I've never drawn anything that's even close to like um, anything that I see up on those walls. I liked uh, the kind of uh, clay art like the things that people kind of made like the pottery and stuff because that was really cool. I saw like an octopus that was like really in-depthly kind of concentrated with the art. They did each and every suction cup on the tentacles and they had cool little lines coming out of the head and both like gills and stuff like that. And I thought that was really cool. As well as I kind of like the self-portrait things because it's like someone's view on their self and so they drew it how they thought they would look and how they feel about themselves. We asked these high school artists how they began to pursue art in the first place. These were their answers. I've been doing art for as long as I can remember, so probably like preschool, like maybe around like age three or five. Um, and I started because I watched Disney movies as a kid, and also I watched like a ton of Pokemon. And so I always wanted to like um, make my own, like Disney princesses or characters or whatever, or I was just like so inspired by them that I wanted to recreate them myself. So that's kind of how I started doing art, and then it just went on from there. Um, I think the main thing that got me interested in art was my 8th grade art class at Gentry. Uh, my teacher, she was just so cool and she was always so excited and she just made that class so much fun and it really made me want to get into art and so I've been invested in it ever since. <laughs> teachers being such a great influence on these creators, we wanted to know their thoughts on their students' work. Rockbridge art teacher Shannon Blakey shares his thoughts. It's great. Um, I think it's very cool. Um, I 
I think about it a fair amount in terms of like some of the things that I was doing in high school and then um, and sometimes I'm, I'm just in awe of the, the quality of work that's going on. Um, as a, a student in like senior year in high school, I was pretty excited about making work and pretty dedicated to the idea of making work. And I see some of the things that I'm, you know, I'm having students make and I'm like, oh my gosh, like this is so much better than anything that I created when I was in high school. It's, it's just amazing. Um, and so, yeah, I, I think there's, uh, there's a lot of talented students here. So whether it's photography, paintings, self-portraits, or comics, there's always something unique to show at Rock Ridge's annual art show. Awesome story, Sarah and Hallie. Recently, local citizens participated in Clean Up Columbia. Here's Caitlin with the story. Helping hands are just a few things you could spot around Columbia this past weekend as citizens in Columbia gathered together at the 23rd annual Clean Up Columbia. We are at Capen Park off Rock Quarry Road right now. We have been picking up trash this morning. Students from Battle High School brought multiple organizations to the event, including the Rotary Club, Wake Up Interact, and Battle Corps, and encouraged students to participate in the event. And we really just want our members to not just be a part of our group but to also be a part of the community and it's just a you know we want to do something bigger than yourselves and our city and our community put so much time and effort into the parks and the trails that we want to keep it clean for our community to be able to come out and enjoy. Community members that helped pick up trash around Cape and Park hope they will impact future residents who come to the park knowing that it is not filled with litter. I think that it's a good feeling whenever you um, can walk um, down a nature's path and um, not have to stop to pick up a piece of trash and just knowing that um, the things that live that live in these woods are safe and we're not doing anything to harm them and we're making an effort to preserve nature in our community um, I think that's really important and I'm sure that everyone who comes and walks this trail will appreciate how clean it is next time they come while they didn't have the biggest group or the most bags collected, students simply enjoyed getting to spend time with others from the community. Meeting everybody from Metro Rotary and everybody from the other schools because a lot of people I've never seen before and just getting uh, to know them and meet them and figure out what they do and where they come from and how they feel about things is just it's great. When it comes to volunteering and bettering the community, residents of Columbia aren't afraid to jump in. While dates have not been released for next year, students hope that more will want to serve next year. From CPS 360, I'm Caitlin Bailey. What a beautiful community you have shared with us, Caitlin. Do you like dancing and singing? CPS high schoolers gathered for the ultimate lip sync battle. Katie shares the story. This year, Columbia Public Schools experienced their third annual Como Cal lip syncing battle, bringing in a crowd from all over, impressing everyone. Como Cal was not just about the fun, as it is also about a big fundraiser for our local community. Uh, it was great energy, but you know, it really wasn't about the Como Cal, but it was really about children's growth and making sure we're spreading kindness and everybody understands, you know, one act of kindness can go a long way. Proceeds tonight, I believe the majority of it, uh, for every ticket sold and the group's interest, they go to two children's world. While all the teams looked good on the stage, the practice was not always easy. So we met like the, we started meeting like the week before spring break and then didn't meet spring break and met like three times after that. So like in total like ten times. <laughs> but it was all worth it. Yeah, better than we thought we did. We or than we thought we were going to. We definitely thought we were gonna do horrible, so the groups were all very good, but also very different, giving everyone a favorite. And that'll be on the waves. Yeah, they should be on. My favorite was the Rock Ridge teacher team. I think they really good job. The winners, however, being a Rock Ridge group called Gen Z. While Como Cow is still new, it is a big hit as people are already looking forward to next year. Actually, yeah.
Thanks, Katie. That story was music to my ears. Michaela captured the beneficial event for Rockbridge Show Choir. Every year at Rockbridge, a choir benefit takes place. With many different things to offer, including food and other items, this benefit helps fund the costs for the upcoming season. This includes lodging for competitions, competition fees, costume costs, and more. It helped raise money for Rockbridge Show Choirs. We gave money to Victoria for her clothes and to dress for the costumes for next year. The unique bonds formed between under and upperclassmen allow future seniors to feel prepared to perform solos and lead the way for other members of show choir. Well, my best friend did show choir and she graduated last year, Andrea Baker, and um, I loved watching her do her solo last year and it got me so excited because a bunch of my friends graduated last year. So I was really excited to do it this year and be like, I'm old enough to do that. So. While many unique items were being auctioned off, some felt that the night meant a bit more than just that. We have like a whole performance instead of just helping people out at the benefit. And so it's kind of nerve wracking because you're all like, a, you have to sing a solo, you guys have to do duets. But it's honestly really fun because um, like the past three years I've been like hyping myself up for the um, senior part of it, senior cabaret, and so it was really exciting to finally do that. Over a variety of different songs and performers, the senior performances were enjoyed by everyone. A lot of them did songs that I hadn't necessarily heard. They weren't necessarily like pop songs. I had only heard one of them. Uh, Alex Schuss did Across the Universe by the Beatles. I had heard that. But the other ones, uh, they were like poppy, you know, but they weren't necessarily like big on the radio or something. So I thought that was interesting. You could tell they cared a little bit about music. They looked a little bit into it, you know. With many talented performers, great food, and unique auction items, the benefit was a success. I'm Michaela Morganson, reporting for CPS 360. Rockbridge students showcased their talents last week. Here's Amaya. Capers is a school-wide talent show at Rockbridge High School. It showcases talents of all types. <laughs> I was in an act for Capers, and I also did pit band for Capers. So my job was to basically play at the beginning, at intermission, and at the end of Capers for bows. Capers is an event the students of all interests can enjoy. My favorite part is just seeing everybody perform and a lot of the acts are like really goofy and um, they're like kind of like memes sometimes. While some students enjoy the entire show, others favor specific acts. I liked the duo between dance and like a song. I thought those were very fun. Baby. It's not like your normal music event, which is kind of like calm and kind of like just kind of boring in some ways. It's really fun and people actually like show up and support each uh, musician. Sophomore Faith Harrison explains why Capers is so special. I like how the MCs in between like have jokes and it's funny and it's not like solely talent based. It's about having fun. Capers is a tradition that will be enjoyed by many for years to come. Thanks, Amaya. Select Battle students were able to bring their short plays to life. Here's the story. Each year, the Battle High creative writing and advanced acting students get together to put on plays written and produced by high school students. The plays are written by creative writing students and performed by advanced acting students and directed by William Palmer, Battle's theater teacher. We've been doing the short plays. This was our second year doing it with uh, Mr. Gammon in the creative writing class. Uh, Mr. Gammon approached me last year about it. He said I wanted to do a uh, short play, one act play unit and I really think it would be really awesome if we could bring this to performance and really get to collaborate and I thought that was a great opportunity for my students to actually take an original student written work from our school and be able to put it on stage. So the, just the ability not only just to collaborate with the two across the campus but also it's things that there, it's battles, like it's battle students, written, performed, so it's something we kind of get to like have ownership of. So it's a really awesome opportunity. So we have in the past the advanced acting class has done it. Um, this year um, we had some hand-picked theater students from across my program who got the chance to do the staged readings. Mr. Gammon, the creative writing teacher, came up with the idea to have students' work performed live. Well, when I first started teaching creative writing, um, 
I didn't, uh, we never, we always ran out of time to do drama um, because we started the year off with flash fiction and then short stories and then with everything else that we did the rest of the year, um, we always came down to the last few weeks and just didn't have time to, um, to do drama. And so I always kind of felt bad that my students didn't get that experience to, to try out script writing and, um, and, and develop those kinds of skills. And so I thought of, well, why don't we try one act plays? Then I got the idea of, well, wouldn't it be cool to see these one act plays performed? Senior Lexi Camp wrote one of the plays selected and tells about her involvement in the production. As soon as I like started writing the first scene, it kind of just came easily to me. And then as far as the play being presented, I wasn't really involved in that, which was, at first I was kind of nervous because I thought, well, I want to give my input because I wrote the story, but it was actually kind of fun to see what they did with it on their own. These plays took a lot of teamwork, but it was great to see the work of multiple battle students all come together. This is Molly Fox for CPS 360. Great story, Molly. This has been CPS 360. I'm Emma Higgins. And I'm Molly Fox. See you on the next show.